I just want to extend my apology to John Williams. Please don't demonetize me. This is the Scorpius by Robert Space Industries. It's a two-person heavy fighter with four size 3 weapon hardpoints for each crew member and 16 size 2 missiles. Even though the co-pilot has a bit more DPS than the pilot thanks to the deeper ammo magazine, it's still a very capable ship for a solo pilot. There's also a Scorpius Antares variant that's almost identical to the base Scorpius, except the Antares variant has a slightly higher SCM than its top speed. And instead of the co-pilot having a turret, the Antares co-pilot only has control over a quantum dampener and an EMP. It's one of the lighter heavy fighters and comes with a single size 2 shield and lower hull HP versus heavier fighters like the Vanguards and the Ares Starfighters, but it's also smaller and a lot more maneuverable than them to offset that. That makes it a lot more fun to fly, but it also a bit more frantic since you can get lit up pretty quick if you're in a bad position. And despite being a smaller ship, its X-Wing configuration still gives it a large cross-section for catching incoming fire, so you'll have to use your maneuverability to avoid direct lines of fire and disengage when necessary. And while its acceleration stats for turning and changing direction are actually better than other heavy fighters by default, it lags behind the others once you take the boost into account. The main downside of the Scorpius is that its weapons are on its wing tips, so losing a wing means that you lose a weapon. It also means that your weapon conversions can be an issue when smaller targets are really close since your weapons are situated in a really wide orientation. Another annoying nitpick is that it only has two MFDs for the pilot, so if you want to see your own ship status as well as the enemy that you're targeting, you're going to constantly have your MFDs interrupted by the enemy comms. If we only had a third MFD, we could set it to comms and avoid that issue, but SIG really wanted us to focus on our enemies cursing at us. Fortunately, in the 3.20 PTU, it looks like we're getting our self status and target status on the top of the screen like we used to have, so that issue is going to be solved assuming SIG doesn't revert that change. The co-pilot turret of the Scorpius also has a really cool party trick, and that's its capability to either be in an offensive forward facing position on the top of the ship, or a more defensive rear facing position on the bottom of the ship. It's a bit of a strange addition since the Scorpius is already one of the most agile heavy fighters, but this just ensures that no one can ever stay in your blind spot while you're fully crewed. For storage, you get two 1500k micro SCU external storages for the pilot and the co-pilot, as well as a weapon rack for guns, sidearms, and utility gadgets. So this could even be a decent bunker runner if you're picky about what you loot. For the components of the Scorpius, you only want to change the shields in the quantum drive. For the shields, you want any grade A shield because they all have the same shield HP and recharge rate. The military grade A FR-76 has slightly higher distortion resistance, so that's what you want if you're going to PvP. But if you're only doing NPC combat, then you can save 8k Alpha UEC and get the civilian grade A 7MA Lorica instead. For the Quantum Drive, if this is your only ship, then you probably want a civilian Atlas or Voyage Quantum Drive since that will let you get around the verse quickly without refueling. But if this is a dedicated combat ship, then it's best to grab a military VK00 Quantum Drive for their really fast pool times. This is useful because in combat your ideal strategy is to dive in, kill your target, and then quantum away as quickly as possible, while ignoring the wingman. So you don't want to sit there taking shots while waiting for a long civilian drive to spool up. For the missiles, you're forced to use size 2s, so I prefer the default missiles that it comes with, the cross-section Tempest 2s, since they have consistent locking and a high hit rate. 
You could also go with the cross-section Strike Force 2s, which do a little bit more damage in exchange for flying slower and potentially missing more often. For IR missiles, the Vanduul bullets do significant damage, but all IR missiles can have finicky target locking and I've found that they don't hit as consistently as cross-section missiles. So go with these if you want to prioritize damage even more at the cost of usability and consistency. You can also go with the Rattler 2s, which are the missiles that shoot more missiles. It looks really freaking cool, but I haven't ever shut down enemy components with them, so I personally pass on these. EM missiles used to be really good in previous patches, but now I've had a lot of instances where they just fly past the enemy as if they weren't targeted at all. So I avoid them since there's no upside to their inconsistency. As for the turret, you'll want to use laser repeaters since they'll give you the easiest time landing damage on your target and you've got a massive capacitor so you don't need to use cap efficient cannons. And lastly, as for your primary weapons, I like three different loadouts. Fixed laser cannons, fixed laser repeaters, and gimbaled laser repeaters. We'll go through each loadout, but I just want to mention that I didn't like the gimbaled laser cannons because their gimbal tracking was pretty hit or miss for the slower cannon projectile speeds. That said, let's get into it. Fixed laser cannons are probably my favorite loadout in 3.19.1, and they're definitely going to be my go-to in 3.20 since VHRT bounties will have much tankier targets like Constellations, Hercules Starlifters, Carrick, Starfarers, and Reclaimers, all of which have size 3 shields. My go-to laser cannon is the FL-33, since it has the same DPS stats as all the other laser cannons, but it has no weapon spread, so in theory your shots will be more accurate. But honestly, it's a very small difference, so if you like the way the other laser cannons look or sound, just go for it. They all have identical DPS stats in 319. Cannons are a bit harder to use than laser repeaters, but they offer a higher sustained DPS in return. Cannon shots travel at 700 meters per second, which is half the speed of the laser repeater's 1400 meters per second projectile speed, which means you need to lead your shots more and it gives your target more time to evade. Size 3 cannons also have a shorter range at 1225 meters versus the 1540 meters of size 3 repeaters, but they're more capacitor efficient so you get a deeper ammo magazine and will do a lot more damage before needing to recharge ammo. Because of these characteristics, cannons are best used against larger, slower, tankier targets, which is why they do pretty well in VHRTs. Hurricanes and even wardens can be a bit tricky though since the hurricane is a small target and the Warden has many destructible components that will tank incoming fire for that critical hull section. This actually makes the Warden the hardest target in my opinion since you need to focus your fire on the central rear section of the ship to avoid hitting the engines or the infinite front shield. Fortunately, since the Scorpius has a lot of boost, you can actually use that to help you get into position above, behind, or below your target. You have to be wary though, since it can take some time and you'll definitely run into situations where the enemy just keeps pointing their infinite front shield at you while taking down your shield, forcing you to disengage. But as long as you get out without taking damage, you can always recharge shields and go back in again, coming in from a different angle to try for positional advantages. Another thing you can do to help you land cannon shots is enable staggered fire, which means that your guns will shoot consecutively one after another. By default, when you pull the trigger, all of the weapons in a weapon group will fire at the same time. With staggered fire enabled, the guns will alternate firing to produce a more consistent stream of bullets heading towards your target. This can be useful for cannons since they have a slower fire rate and the slower projectile velocities than equal sized repeaters. By having a more consistent stream of bullets arcing between you and the enemy, you'll have more feedback about where your shots are landing and how to adjust your aim. It's a personal preference thing though, so I just wanted to mention it in case you didn't know. Lastly, don't forget to use your missiles to help you whittle down the trickier targets. I have the most trouble with hurricanes and wardens, especially in zero atmospheres, so that's when I use missiles. I actually found that I was often overly stingy with my missiles, and then in a moment of carelessness I'd take damage and one of my wings would go red and I'd have to stop to repair anyway. So you might as well just use those missiles and risk being caught without them rather than saving them for a just-in-case scenario. And if you're finding yourself in an impossible situation, it's okay to adjust your strategy and pick off a wingman or two before neutralizing that main target. Fixed laser repeaters is another solid loadout option for the Scorpius. 
This also is my preferred loadout for tackling medium combat service assistance beacons since it has respectable DPS for the tankier enemies, but also has the projectile speed to help you take out the light fighters that are often the escorts. I prefer to use the attrition repeaters because I love the way they sound and look, but you can use any laser repeater that you want since they all have the same damage stats. The CF series panthers are cheapest if you're looking to be economical. In my testing, this loadout actually had a slightly higher income per hour than the fixed cannons at 360k alpha UEC per hour versus the 340k alpha UEC per hour for cannons, but I think that also had to do with the fact that my fixed cannon loadout had some pretty tough bounty spawns that slowed it down, whereas I got a bit luckier with the repeaters. But both fits are great options for VHRTs in 3.19.1. In 3.20 though, I think you really want to go to cannons because the laser repeater loadout is 23% less DPS and 3.20 VHRT targets are tanky boys. Because of this lower DPS, this fit struggles a bit more against the tanky reclaimer bounties. I had to actively manage my power in those fights, setting the power to full shield while I was shooting and only having it to full weapons when they needed to be recharged. With full power to shields, the shields have 25% more damage resistance, and any shield face that hasn't been hit for a few seconds will be able to recharge. So you can get some shields back this way, or at least make your existing shield last a bit longer. You make up for those struggles though by having a much easier time against Wardens and Hurricanes, since you have the longer 1540 meter range and faster projectile speed, so it's a lot easier to land your shots, which will often give you more actual DPS against those targets compared to cannons. You can still use missiles to whittle them down though, but I find myself saving them more for situations where the incoming damage is going to be really high, or where the enemy might be a pain in the butt, like a hurricane or a warden in 0G. The nice thing is, since you do have a lot of boost available, you can use it liberally to help you keep a good position on the target, especially in low or no atmosphere. And remember that your bottom and rear thrusters are your strongest, so you want to roll, pitch, and vertically strafe against your target when fighting for position. Since we always want to hit the rear of ships with size 2 shields, it's good to get into the habit of using all the tools at your disposal to get yourself into the position to do that. The last loadout that I think is worth trying is the Gimbal Repeater loadout, which is the default loadout that the Scorpius comes with. This loadout had the lowest income per hour in my testing, coming in at about 330k alpha UEC per hour, while also having a relatively easy set of enemies to kill. And that lower income comes down to a couple of things. The biggest is that, with the lowest DPS of the three loadouts, tanky targets like Reclaimers and Valkyries are going to take longer to kill. The other side of it is that if you're taking advantage of the auto gimbals, then your guns are always going to be trying to hit center mass on the enemy rather than aiming at the rear of the enemy like you can do with the fixed gimbals. This means more of your fire is likely going to hit that infinite front shield which undoes some of the benefit you gain from the auto aiming gimbals. And the auto gimbals aren't perfect either. You still need to aim reasonably close to where you would have to with fixed gimbals, and the performance is also server dependent. On a faster server your gimbals will track better, but enemies will also do a better job of not letting you get in position above, below, or behind them. I've had plenty of face-to-face -face knife fights with wardens that just stared me down with their infinite shields on servers over 7 FPS. But fortunately, since you don't need to focus as much on aiming, you can spend more of your time focusing on your positioning and timing your boost to get into the right position against your target. And on a more typical 4 to 6 FPS server, you can often maneuver around them with boost and land clear shots on their midsection. When your shots land and are registered, this build can feel really satisfying, but when they don't, it can be a bit frustrating. Against the Reclaimer, I suggest changing your gimbals to fixed and just focusing your fire on its large rear section so that you don't spread your damage over multiple shield faces. If you keep the auto gimbals, you'll still mostly target the right spot, but it definitely takes longer than aiming manually. Against the other three VHRT targets, I just go auto gimbals and try to spend more of my energy on getting into a good position so that hitting the target center mass won't be blocked by that infinite front shield. This would be a really solid loadout to use while you're grinding your way up to lower bounties, since it will easily aim at and obliterate anything with size 1 shields. And despite the lower DPS, this fit still performed within 10% of the other loadouts, so it's still a solid option for those that don't want to struggle as hard with something like aiming fixed cannons. 
now I'm going to walk you through my thought process for an engagement here. We're using laser cannons and we're up against a hurricane on Daymar, so we open up with some missiles. You can see my velocity indicator is flying off to the right side. That's because I don't want to fly straight at my enemy, but rather to the side of them. So that as we're passing each other, we can just kind of rotate around and keep them on target. I'm starting with my capacitor set to full weapon, so you can see I've got 41 shots in each of my magazines. When I end up taking some more damage, I should be putting it to shields, and you'll see that the ammo counts will drop down to like 34. Uh, and that's because, yeah, there we go. That's because you want to be able to start recharging your shields if possible, and also trying to make your existing shields last longer. I did that a bit late, so the shields went down. I'm flying away here to recharge my shields, you need to not get hit for a few seconds, but notice that my shields are not even half up yet and I turn around already. And that's because you really just need to get clear of the enemy fire and then you want to get back to them as quickly as possible so that they don't get the opportunity to recharge their shields too much as well. So then we come back in for an engagement over here, and you'll notice that I didn't put my speed limiter back down to the SCM speed like I had in the initial part of the engagement. That's because I want to be able to try to push myself a little bit extra to try and get an appropriate angle on the enemy and occasionally, like right there, you'll see that I'm kind of bumping up into the red just a bit. And sometimes that's what you need to get that ever so slight extra angle to get around those infinite front shields. You'll also probably notice I've been using my boost occasionally to try to get the right kind of angle on the enemy and eventually we get it lined up and we blow them up. To summarize the different loadouts and what their stats, strengths, and weaknesses are, here's a quick recap so that you can see what you might want to try out first. And that's all I've got for the Scorpius for now, folks. I tried to keep this video a bit shorter since things are changing a bunch in 3.20 with a much greater variety in the enemies that we'll be facing across all difficulty levels. On the PTU so far, I've seen things from Talons and Vultures to 600 Eyes and Carracks and almost everything in between. It's an exciting time for bounty hunting and I think it's going to make the Scorpius a lot more viable at the HRT level while still being capable at the HRTs. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know. You can find me in the comments or on Twitch. I've also got a Discord, so come by and say hi. I'll put a link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching folks. I hope you've liked this video. Cheers.